Although you might already be familiar with a powerful masking feature in Lightroom Classic known as mask intersecting, there's also a feature in Photoshop that does not only the exact same thing, but it is more powerful and often easier to use. And it's been in Photoshop for many, many years. So what I wanna do in this episode is to show both. I wanna show how to use the mask intersecting very quickly in Lightroom Classic. And then I'm gonna jump into Photoshop and show show in depth how you can use this, how you can save some of your settings from it, and how you can use it in more than one circumstance to show just how powerful and easy to use this feature is. Let's start out here in Lightroom Classic before showing how to use this feature in Photoshop. But the problem that we wanna solve here is that we wanna dehaze not just the sky, but we wanna dehaze so that we can see these mountains a lot clearer in the distance. So to do that, you would try to use dehaze if you did that without a mask, then everything becomes overly saturated. Not what we want. So the alternative is to then mask out the sky. But if we do that, we're gonna once again dehaze the entire sky and we wanna do just these mountains. This is where a mask intersection comes in handy. Let me show you the example of doing this. It'll become a little bit clear and you can see some of the flexibility here, but we'll just be scratching the surface because when we get into Photoshop, there's a lot more that we can do. So here in Lightroom Classic, you would select your masking tool and we would select in this case, the sky. Once it selects the sky and we can see it here, now I can adjust the dehaze. So I'll bring the dehaze slider up and I'm dehazing the entire sky. That's okay, because we're gonna intersect this. I'm most interested in the mountains in the distance. So that looks like it's dehazed pretty well. If you wanna see the difference, you can toggle on and off the mask by clicking and holding this eye icon. That's before, releasing it, that's after. Now it's time to add the intersection so that we can isolate those mountains. What you do is on the mask, you click on the three dots. Then you select intersect mask with, and in this case, I'll select a linear gradient. And what this will do is as I draw this linear gradient from the bottom to the top, it's now going to only apply that mask that was already in the sky to now this mask of the linear gradient. If you want to see where, then you just click this to show that overlay. And you can see now that we've protected the ground. No matter what I do with this mask, it's not going to go into the ground. It's over that area of the sky that we wanted to dehaze. But it's not as flexible as we could do in Photoshop. So if I were to back out of this, we're going to take a look at this in Photoshop. Let's go back here to where I had my initial edits done and I'm going to right click on the image and say edit in, edit in Photoshop. Now with this example, it's time to do our mask intersection to do the same thing, but with a lot more flexibility here in Photoshop. So to dehaze that area, first thing we're gonna do is duplicate this layer. We'll do Control J or Command J on a Mac. Then I'll dehaze it by going to Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter. Now in here, I can then dehaze it by just moving the dehaze slider. As I move the dehaze slider, everything's being dehazed, but that's okay because we're gonna use a mask intersect. Now, I could have also turned this into a smart object before opening it and have a history, but for this example, it really wasn't necessary. So now I'll just click okay. So now I've got this other layer here and everything's been dehazed, so let's start with just the sky and then add the intersection. This is very similar to Lightroom Classic, just with different features. What we're gonna do here is go up to the select menu and select the sky. Then just like in Lightroom Classic, it'll select the sky, but you can see it's a little bit different. In this case, it didn't quite select all the mountains. So what I can do is use the quick selection tool. So by using the quick selection tool, then I can select other areas. And to me, that's good enough for this example. Now that I've got the areas selected that I wanna dehaze, I just have to add a mask. And I do that by clicking on the mask icon down here. So now we're basically at that point in Lightroom Classic before we did the intersection. We have just a dehaze applied to the sky and we overlapped a little bit on the ground as well. 
So now it's time to do the intersect so we don't have this extremely dehazed upper atmosphere. We only want to isolate it down here. So to do that, on that layer, you would right click and then you say new group from layers. And you could name this whatever you'd like. And what it has done is made this group that now I can add another layer mask to. Now there are a lot of ways to use masks in Photoshop. And if you're not familiar with any of this that I'm going through very quickly during the masking part, you might want to take a look at my course on expert editing for real estate photography. In that course, I do talk in depth about masks and a lot of the things that I'm going to be showing here. In this case, what I'm going to do is apply a mask from the menu instead of the icon like we did earlier. What I can do is go up to layer and then layer mask and then I'm going to have one that reveals all. So here nothing has changed so far but we have a mask that we can work with and apply the intersection. And to apply the intersection I'm going to go over to the gradient tool. If you click and hold on that you'll see there are two tools gradient and paint bucket tool. We want the gradient tool. You want to select this icon over here which is your linear gradient and then the gradient here usually comes up by default but if it doesn't it's under the basics and it's this white to black. Once you have that selected then you can draw the linear gradient just like we did before from bottom to top when we were in Lightroom Classic and you can see it's starting to apply that gradient. So if I were to turn this layer off and on you can see that it feathered that in. I can adjust the midpoint so I can see where the feathering is. Here, this is feathering that wouldn't be acceptable very little. You can see it's making a harsh line. So you can adjust this into the atmosphere at any point that you want to where you see that it looks like a natural blend and then just turn the layer on and off to see how well that works. Okay, now it's time to jump into some really powerful things that we can do at this point. The first thing is, if you wanted to save this gradient, you can. By making sure that you're on the mask that you applied the gradient to, you select that gradient tool and then in the properties dialog box over here, not the mask one, but the actual properties, then you can say save as preset. You can do that and name it whatever you'd like and when you do, then later if you want to apply it, then you can bring it up. It'll be under the presets down near the bottom. That's completely optional if you feel you want to do that. But the next thing that becomes more powerful is in this type of mask intersection, we're using groups so we can add many other adjustment layers. For instance, if we zoom in here, we can see that this is really turned quite blue on the mountains. And it really wasn't that way. There was actually a lot of red in there, but it's very typical of dehaze to try to remove that brown haze from the sky. But in so doing, it also removed it from those mountains. So let's just zoom out here and we'll adjust that with a color balance layer in our intersection. To do that, we'll first go above our dehaze layer here. And then what I can do here is add adjustment layer for the color balance by going up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then color balance. And I'll just select OK. And now I want to select a clipping mask. And to do that, it's right here. And this is something you've seen. If you have my course on expert editing, this is very common. If you want to just isolate it to that layer below, you click that and now I can adjust, for instance, a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red. And that now is coming through where if I turn this layer off and on, you can see it changed from just the blues to now this more reddish hue. Let me zoom in there on that so you can see the difference. I'll get rid of the properties dialog box here. This is with that color layer and then this is without it. So it gives me a lot more flexibility to do it. If we take a look at the bigger picture, this is what it was before and this is after. And what's best about this, I can save this as a Photoshop file, put it on an external hard drive, and I can edit this anytime I want to later in the future and I don't have to worry about managing Lightroom Classic catalogs. Okay, so this was one example, but let's take a look at another example by looking at this portrait. So this was a headshot done for one of my A&D clients and with this, 
It started out okay. I had the umbrella rather close here. I was using a bounce umbrella. It's contrasting, it's a powerful image, but we wanted to really lighten it up. So I did some adjustments, brought us some shadows and whatnot, and also then a brightness contrast layer. No big deal. But it was best if I did a mask intersection by doing this. And there's my mask intersection where all that it did was bring up some of the brightness here. I didn't want to affect the background. I wanted to intersect across the subject. So let's turn this off and let's see how that would be done. So what I would do here is select the entire subject. That would get me something to start with for my mask intersection. So to do that, I would go over to the quick selection tool, but select object selection tool, make sure that sample all layers is on and there it can select him, the background or the subject. So I'm gonna select the subject right there. And once that's selected, I can make a new brightness contrast layer. So I would go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then brightness contrast. And then with that, I'll bring up the brightness a little bit more. Now it's bringing up everything on the subject, but that's okay because we're gonna do an intersection. So I'll just close that dialogue. And now in here, I'm going to right click on this layer and say new group from layers. So once again, we've got that intersection mask that we can do if we apply the layer mask, which is to go to layer and then layer mask. And in this case, I'll say hide all. So now it's hidden, but if I were to turn that off and on, you can see I can paint then all that I want to just on the subject. So in this case, I'm going to use a brush. So by selecting the brush tool, and I'll just use a flow of let's say 30%, I can now softly brush in here and I can overlap onto the background, it won't matter, because I've got an intersection of the subject that was selected and then the mask here that I'm applying to it. So I can decide in here on just the subject, the areas I wanna brighten. So let's take a look at before and after. This is before our mask intersection and this is after. Now you can change this as much as you want. I can go back here to the adjustments of the brightness contrast layer and then lower that as well. So whatever I'd like to do, I can do within that mask intersection. Now doing this in Lightroom Classic, you could accomplish the same thing although it can be a little bit more difficult to work with. And in here you have a lot more flexibility because the mask intersection is working under groups. And by using groups, there's a lot of powerful things that we can do that are just a lot more difficult in Lightroom Classic. But here we've got two different tools and two different ways to do it. Whether we use Photoshop or you use Lightroom Classic, you can make a decision now on what you feel would be the best tool for a particular job or a particular image based on its individual requirements.